Chargers round two. Welcome in, everybody, to the Silver and Black Show. I'm Amber Theo Harris, along with James Jones. They go on the road the last two mm -hmm. weeks. James, they get two wins, looking to extend it yeah. to three against the Chargers. But they looked a lot better in those last two games, especially on defense. Ooh, you telling, right? Yeah. Last two games on defense, they're getting off the field on third down. They're creating some takeaways. They're making plays on the defense side of the ball. And we said, if you can get D.C. back to football, we all know that he's the comeback kid. But if you can get him back to football, things like this will happen. Devontae Adams, walk-off win, and then Josh Jacobs against the Seattle Seahawks. Another walk-off win, big-time performance. But they don't get the ball without the defense playing at a high level. And the first couple weeks of this season, they were not playing at a high level. These last two wins, they have been playing big-time football. If they could keep it going, we'll be talking about another W. Weeks 1 through 10, the defense giving up uh, third down conversions 48% of the time. Last two weeks, that's down to 29%. Also in the red zone. Bend, but don't break yeah, but in don't the break. red zone. And that's what's been working for this Ooh, Raiders team. But we just saw Josh Jacobs mm -hmm. on the field running that football. That man had 303 yards of scrimmage last mercy. week against mm -hmm. the Seahawks. And that is the catalyst for yeah. this team because that opens up everything else. Josh Jacobs If you can't stop Josh Jacobs, you cannot stop the Las Vegas Raiders from doing anything. Josh Jacobs is the guy that gets this thing going. As you can see right here, leads the league in rushing yards. And you see the goons behind him. You see Derek Henry, you see Nick Chubb, Saquon, Miles Sanders, but he is playing at a whole different level right now. And yes, Amber, you are right. The offense goes strictly through Josh Jacobs, and that makes DC better. That makes Devontae Adams better, and that makes the Raiders better. And not only does he have over 1,100 yards rushing right now, he has about 1,500 yards from scrimmage, which oh, so also can, leaves uh, he can catch. He, he got some that. hands yeah, yeah. as well. Uh, here is what uh, Brandon Staley had to say about the Raiders rushing attack. They know how to run the ball. They have an identity, and they have tight ends who can block, which makes the running game go a lot better. Um, and they've got an elite runner that breaks a lot of tackles. Uh, you can't block everything perfectly. You've got to have running backs that can create uh, on their own, and, and Josh is as good as anybody at that because he can make you miss, and he can run through you, and um, he's a very dangerous player. So they've... Um, really established, uh, you know, consistency in that phase, and you know he's leading the NFL right now. And last week was a good example of of why they've been playing well offensively. Coach Daly is right. He is a dangerous player, especially when your defense is struggling against the run. And the Chargers right now are bottom four in rush defense. They give up over 150 yards a game. Yeah, this run defense cannot get any worse. And it doesn't matter which running back is back there toting the football. They are getting big time yards, carry after carry. And this is a problem. They got to get this fixed, especially coming up and trying to play Josh Jacobs and the Las Vegas Raiders. This is what we do. And you heard him say the tight ends block really well. The tight ends is a big part of the run game as well, too. So you know that it is going to be a lot of bodies in that box trying to stop Josh Jacobs. 5.4 yards per carry. That is what the Chargers defense is giving up right now. But look at their last five opponents. Mm. 200 they give up on the ground to the Seattle Seahawks. Over 200 My to the Atlanta goodness. Falcons. San Francisco, 157 yards against them. Kansas City rushed for over 150 mm. yards. And then the Cardinals last week had 181 yards Ooh. on the ground. So that is going to be an area of weakness that you know Josh Jacobs is going to try to attack. But yeah. if you are the Chargers, mm -hmm. You've got to drop a safety down the box. <laughs> Derwin James. Yeah. He has to, but, but what happens? Because then you leave Tay open, you, Devontae Adams. And that's the poison of playing the Raiders, the right? you got to pick your poison. And with Josh Jacobs coming along like he's coming along, that is what this does, right? And if Derwin James is not in the box, Right, It is going to be a long day for the Chargers defense because we are going to run the ball down their throat. So if, you are, if I was the Chargers, Devontae Adams is going to have to beat me. I do not want to have Josh Jacobs beat me. And I'm going to show you right here, right? Derwin James, you see him highlighted, the safety right here. If he is not in the box, this is not in the box, we are checking run. We want to run this football, Raiders, because he is out of the box 20 yards back, and you get gash plays. Josh Jacobs does not have to make too many bodies miss. If he is on the line of scrimmage, don't play with this man. 
<laughs> do not play with this man when he's on the line of scrimmage. It is check pass. Do not run it into Derwin James. He's extremely strong. He gets off blocks. If you're a tight end, you can't block him. A fullback, you can't block him. He is a problem down there. Right here, you see him in cover two against the San Francisco 49ers. Light box. They towed it. They hand it off, and he is not making a tackle till it's 15 yards down the field. That's why this run defense is so bad. I'm going to say it again. When he is on this edge, don't play with him. He is coming downhill, tackles for loss. Nobody can block him. Debo Samuel, one of the strongest receivers in the league, cannot get to him and block him. Again, it is a repeat performance by this Chargers defense. Derwin James not in the box, gash plays. So Derek Carr, if you see that, it is check, run, run, run. Let Josh Jacobs do what Josh Jacobs does. Right here is check, 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 pass, pass, pass. Let Devontae Adams do what Devontae Adams does because Derwin James, when he is in the box, is a problem. When he is outside the box, it is run the football down they throw. It's very simple. If I got to come in these meetings, I will come in these meetings <laughs> and put in a game plan. It is simple. Inside the box, pass it. Out of the box, run that ball. Very simple. But also, remember, Khalil Mack is back there mm -hmm. as well. The former Raider had three sacks against the Raiders in week one. Got to account for him on defense as well. Coming up next, Justin Herbert has had huge games lately against his last two opponents. I know he's playing hurt, but he's playing well. Josh McDaniels talks about Justin Herbert next on the Silver and Black Show. The Silver and Black Show is brought to you by Cox, proud partner of the Las Vegas Raiders. Allegiant, the official airline of the Las Vegas Raiders. Low fares, nonstop flights. Book now only at Allegiant.com. 1800, the best taste in tequila and official partner of the Raiders. There is a block in there by Kelly and downfield. Wide open touchdown, DeAndre Carter. And the Chargers have taken the lead. Herbert going deep. Joshua Palmer got it! Touchdown, Chargers! Whoa! Bang, bang, bang! Three plays to the end zone. He does a great job, um, and he's always looking for something down the field. Uh, you said it right, and so um, I think it starts with our pass rush. Uh, we have to be very disciplined with the pass rush because this guy's a really good athlete. Uh, if we run by him and open up the middle, he's just going to take off and run, and you know it's 20, 25 yards every time he does it. So uh, being where we're supposed to be, being in our lanes, being disciplined to do it on every pass play, staying deep in the deep part of the field, not letting him have anything easy behind us, and just making him earn everything he gets. Welcome back to the Silver and Black Show as the Raiders get ready to take on the Chargers. Justin Herbert is the biggest threat on offense, and uh, the Raiders are very familiar with Justin Herbert. He has 13 touchdowns, one interception in his matchups career-wise yeah. uh, against the Raiders, and he's been playing very well the past couple of weeks. And so the way that the Raiders' secondary has been playing has been better. Mm -hmm. Deron Harmon's had the green dot yeah. on. Yeah. Uh, been a little bit better, but that's the matchup to watch this week is Herbert versus that secondary. Yeah, it's been better, and, and the whole league, knows about Justin Herbert because Justin Herbert is an absolute problem and you hear these guys that he's throwing the ball to without Mike Williams and Keenan Allen out there and you hear Paul Palmer and these boys making plays it's strictly because of Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert is an absolute baller and you better believe the weak spot in our defense is our secondary right? Their strength is passing the football down the football field and letting their wide receivers win so you better believe Coach Josh McDaniels is right. They are coming out. They are going to look for their shots down the football field and they're going to try to get the ball into their playmaker's hands on the outsides against our DBs. Should have Nate Hobbs back, so yeah. that will help uh, somewhat. But not going to have Mike Williams out there for the Chargers. Keenan Allen is expected to play, but even without Keenan Allen and without Mike Williams, other Chargers yeah. uh, receivers have stepped up. We just saw the highlight of yeah. DeAndre Carter, who had a big game last week against the Cardinals. Right now, Josh Palmer, he can ball. And don't forget Austin Eckler. Austin Eckler has Man. 80 receptions. Yeah. He's a running back. He can hit you so many different ways, a yards from scrimmage kind of guy. So I think he's yeah. the biggest threat to watch out for on that offense. And just look at those numbers. I mean, I'm not taking anything away from those playmakers on that side. But it all starts with number 10. To spin the ball around to all type of different receivers and have them having really the best season of their careers, that is a true testament that you have a big-time quarterback that can't nobody stop. 
So we're going to have to make sure we bring some pressure after him. You heard Josh McDaniel say they like to take shots. Well, they can't take shots with pressure in his face. No. So we got to get some pressure on him to make sure he gets that football out of his hands fast. And there's a huge opportunity to create pressure because there's no doubt that the Chargers' offensive line is struggling up, and they're yeah. banged up. Corey Lindsley, their all-pro center, their Pro blow. Bowl center, is yeah. not going to be out there. Also, their right tackle, Trey Pipkins, he's questionable. And they have given up a lot of pressure over the last two games. We I think there's a player called Max Crosby on the Raiders. Yeah. Do you think he'll have a field day with that? Yeah, you got Mad Max on that side coming off of the football over there. You better believe they're going to have eyes on him. So we need some other guys to step up as well. 55 Chandler Jones has been trying to come on lately these last two games, getting some pressures. If we can get this to him, especially early, any quarterback, I don't care who you are, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, if you get touched early, you're going to be thinking about these pass rushers coming. So I think it's going to be big that we bring some pressure after him early to touch him a little bit, even if we don't sack him. Let <laughs> we'll me know. We right there. Well, you he's know. been sacked nine times in his last two well, games. And yeah. look at the quarterback pressures, the most allowed by this Chargers yeah. offensive line over the last two weeks. The Chargers have given up 38 uh, quarterback pressures over the last two games. So a big opportunity for that pass rush. All right, when we come back, Devontae Adams. Ooh, he is second in the NFL in receiving touchdowns. And he sits down with me coming up next right here on the Silver and Black Show. Doolin is the tailback. Snap to Carr in the shotgun. Back to pass. Climbs the pocket. Eyes downfield. Fires a strike to Devontae at the 25. Breaks away 20. 15, 10, 5. Dives. Touchdown, Raiders. Carr claps his hands. Now gets the ball. Back to pass again. Fires towards the end zone. Adams reaches. Grabs. Diving grab for his first Raiders touchdown just inside the pylon. All right, here with uh, Raiders receiver Devontae Adams. And you're a longtime Raider fan. Raider Nation, though, is just getting to know you this year. You grew up in the 650 yep. EPA, which is, for people that don't know, East Palo Alto. East Palo Alto, yeah. Bay Area. Mm -hmm. um, but it's no secret, you know, it's a little bit of a tough area. And growing up there, how did that shape who you are today? Well, I mean, nothing was given to me from an from a early age. So, um, growing up being a part of that, you know, I'm not, definitely not proud of the, the crime and some of the negative things that come where I'm from, but still proud of where I'm from. And, um, you know, it's, it's definitely maybe the man that I am today. Having adversity in, in, at this point in my life is, you know, it's just a, another chapter. You know, it's nothing that's, that's going to shake me or, or rock me at this point because I've been exposed to pretty much everything. Um, so definitely love and, and take a lot of pride in where I'm from. That definitely helps in this profession, rolling with the punches, Absolutely. doesn't it? At Palo Alto High School, you didn't play football until you were an upperclassman, right? Yeah, junior you were, year. Junior year, yeah. you were a basketball player, and I'm, I'm looking at your height. I'm accounting for the fact that it was high school. Yeah. I'm going to say you were a two? Really, really, really one, one to three. Yeah, it depends. Okay. I, I, play, I will run the point sometimes, but, but yeah, I was, I was usually two, two or three. Do you bring any of the hoops game to the NFL? I mean, honestly, my entire, everything in my bag is from the, the hoop court. People tell me that all the time. They, sometimes they, I've had coaches say, I feel like you're going to dribble the ball sometimes when you're moving <laughs> with it. So, um, I mean, I definitely got some of my shiftiness and, and some of those moves from there. And I, I found that it's made it pretty tough on the DBs because there's not as many rules in basketball. So, you know, in football, you think everything's so structured about the releases. I just play get by the guys if I had a basketball, and it makes it a little easier for me. The third and six, an opportunity maybe here at two plays. Snap to Derek. Back to pass. Pressure off the edge, into the pocket, lobs one downfield for Adams, at the goal line, over his shoulder, touchdown! Derek Carr racing forward on a beautiful ball for 48 yards! Another baller, the greatest of all time, Kobe Bryant. Mm -hmm. He coined the term girl dad, yeah. and now you're a girl dad. Mm -hmm. You have Deja and Desi. Mm -hmm. You're one of the baddest dudes in the NFL. There's got to be something that you do with your daughters as a girl dad that you go, if only people could see me right now, they think I'm a big softy. Honestly, probably half of the stuff that I do with my kids, <laughs> people would say that. Um, I'm, I'm like a different person. Not a different person, but everybody always told me growing up and, and even, you know, my, my younger adult life that you know, you, you're too hard. Like you need, you need some, you need daughters. You need a girl to to kind of soften you up. So I guess that happened because I definitely 
um, engage in some stuff with my with my kids that I probably wouldn't have saw myself doing when I was younger. The and painted nails, like, do you ever do I, that? I haven't painted the nails. I don't. I, we haven't gotten into the nail paint <laughs> world for them yet. I'm sure that will happen at some point, but it will be taken off before I come into the building. <laughs> Absolutely. Unless it's black, then it must stay on. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> You can catch the full interview with Devontae Adams on Raiders.com or the Raiders official YouTube page. And right now, Devontae Adams leads the NFL in targets. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> DC looks to him. Yes. He also is number two in receiving touchdowns yeah. behind Travis Kelsey. Mm -hmm. He has one yard short of 1,000 yards already this season. We're going to get that this week. But it feels like there's a little bit more yeah. meat on the bone because a lot of times we're watching the game together. You see him line up. You can see the, yeah. the cornerback is lining up one-on-one. -on -one. Mm. Ball's got to go to him in that situation. Mm. Yes, and, and this is difficult, right, because I hate targets, right, because targets is if you're close by the football when Derek Carr throws the ball away, that's a target. But we do see some opportunity balls that Derek Carr is giving Devontae Adams, and they don't connect, right? But I don't care if you throw it to him 100 times in the game. If it is one on one. That ball goes to Devontae Adams. We are trying to get to one on one. If Josh Jacobs could come in here and game plan and say Devontae going to be one on one on this play, we are going to take a shot with Devontae every single time. So I think that is the problem, right? Because we're like, yeah, he leads the league in targets, but it's time we watch this tape and watch these games live and we like, it's one on one. Yeah. Throw it over there, Throw it Derek. Over to him. You know? And I think you will see a little bit more of that. But the play action pass is everything for this offense. And it all starts with the Raiders getting off to an early start, oh, yeah. maintaining the lead, and being able to run the football. Absolutely. And we already talked about early in the show, it starts with Josh Jacobs. So is Josh Jacobs able to tote it, that play action pass? You've seen us on the walk-off touchdown in Denver with Devontae Adams on the play action. The Raiders' offense is tough to stop if they could play action pass, and you cannot stop Josh Jacobs. So that is going to be big. And we have to jump out on the Chargers to force them to be one-dimensional because they got a good run. As well. Both the Chargers and the Raiders have played in eight one-score games mm. this year. Chargers have won five of them. The Raiders have not. And so that's been the biggest difference in biggest. the records. Uh, coming up, we're going to talk about Derek Carr. If this game goes to overtime, you got to like Derek Carr's chances. And we're going to tell you why. Coming up next on the Silver and Black Show. The Silver and Black Show has been brought to you by Cox, proud partner of the Las Vegas Raiders. Allegiant, the official airline of the Las Vegas Raiders. Low fares, non-stop flights. Book now only at Allegiant.com. Chevron with Techron gives you unbeatable cleaning and mileage. Chevron, together ahead. I think you have to be um, extremely confident and you have to understand that it's not going to work out every time, you know. Um, you, know, you always, you know, watch those basketball players, or you know, take the last shot and all that kind of stuff. And they, you know, they, they'll be the first ones to tell you how many they've missed. You know, and I'm the same way. Um, but I think it's the confidence that every time you're in that situation, that you can do it. You know, I think it starts with the mentality, the confidence. Um, you know, you know, you have four downs really. Um, you know, to throw for a first down or go run with your legs. You know, whatever that. So making just good decisions. And so um, I, I wish I had like some big secret, but it really just comes down to. You know, you know, taking the big old moment and just simplifying into, okay, just doing my job this play, you know, hopefully will lead us down the field and, you know, into the end zone. Well, Las Vegas is a betting town, and mm -hmm. if this game does yeah. go to overtime, we don't want it to go to overtime. No, we, we want the Raiders want... to win in regulation. But if it does, I would put my money yeah. on Derek Carr. And here is why. Check this out. Throughout NFL history, he is the winningest quarterback Ooh. in overtime. Nine and two in overtime. And by the way, six and one over the last two years. So the Raiders going to overtime a lot over the last two years. 81% winning percentage. That's, That's big better time. than the GOAT. That's big That's time. better than Boomer Esiason. Yeah. Carson Palmer. Carson Palmer used to throw that thing, too. And Eli Manning, he was always clutch in overtime. And so, Derek Carr, if this game goes overtime, you're going to want to put your money on Derek Carr. And uh, we saw that the past two weeks. Devontae Adams, the catch in the end zone. That was a great route, by the way, by Devontae Adams. But then Josh Jacobs breaking free for the 86-yard 
uh, touchdown last week. Absolutely. And the biggest thing that stood out about D.C. up there talking is the preparation, right? And when you really look at it, D.C. has his own film room up here in the Raiders facility, right? Oh, okay. Other than the team film room that he goes to with the quarterbacks, he has his own film room that he watches film in. So it's all about being prepared. And when you get out there in that moment, hey, I done watch film. I know what they going to give me. Let's go down here. Let's score. And you get confidence in that right there. But, yes, our money is on Derek Carr <laughs> if we go into overtime. But let's end this bye thing bye. early because your game check does not change if you go into overtime. It stays the same. So let's finish this thing early. Four quarters, let's beat them up, and let's go on home. Derek Carr's yeah. first overtime win, by the way, was in 2015 against the Chargers. Oh. So maybe history will repeat itself. Uh, Allegiant Stadium rockin'. is going to be rocking. 125 kickoff this Sunday. Good to see the Silver and Black back home after two road wins. That is a place that is a fun place to go see a game. It is. And if you ain't been there, you got to get there because it is a special place. You walk in there. My kid's still scared to see all the face paint and all that. But, <laughs> hey, they love going. I mean, it, it's, it's fun. I mean, it's going to uh, yeah, Cliff Branch, yeah. Uh, he is getting honored. The Branch family, including his sister, Elaine yeah. Anderson, will be joined by a group of Raiders Pro Football Hall of Famers for his Ring of Excellence presentation during the halftime tribute. Huh. Fans in attendance will receive a giveaway item to commemorate Branch's storied career, which culminated, of course, in his inclusion into the Pro Football Hall of Fame posthumously. That happened this summer, the class of 2022. And what's really cool is that Mark Davis really campaigned the Pro Football Hall of Fame to give rings to the families That's of players enough. that are inducted posthumously. Yeah. And uh, Cliff Branch is the first one to have that happen. So it's going to be amazing to see his family out there receiving such an amazing honor and taking home a ring uh, on his behalf and in memory of him. Yeah, that's big time right there. And, and it's crazy that this was hasn't already already been done, right? Yeah. Because, I mean, the families are a big part of they your career it. as well, right? You know, so to see Cliff Branch family to be out there getting honored, you know, getting his rings, showing Cliff Branch out there balling, making <laughs> play after play after play. It's going to be big time. Raiders going to get a W and we're going to honor Cliff. And to see other members of the Pro Football Hall of Fame are going to be in attendance to uh, support his family is really nice as well. But it is going to be the Raiders and the Chargers. Round two. Chargers are up. one nothing. Round one. Yeah, they right. got round we'll, one. Let's get back, Tom. But uh, JJ's got his leather bomber yeah, jacket yeah, on. He's ready it? for battle. The Raiders it? are ready, ready go. for battle. Let's hey, look back, for Josh Tom. Jacobs to continue to have a big game against that Chargers run. Defense. Can the defense stop Josh Justin Herbert, though, on the other side. Those are the questions. We'll see you guys at Raiders game day after the game, but hopefully we'll see you at Allegiant Stadium.